Welcome back to Advice for Grad Students. I'm joined today with uh, John Lindsay, a colleague and friend. And just a reminder, the views expressed today are our own and not of our institutions. John, welcome, and let's just get right into it. What advice do you have for interdisciplinary research and so, as, well, as well as some of the promises and pitfalls? Great, thanks a lot, Phil. Um, you know, this topic is near and dear to my heart. Uh, for better or worse, I've been doing uh, interdisciplinary stuff my entire life. Um, you know, in, in college, I was uh, into philosophy, computer science, linguistics, all at the same time. Um, in the Navy, right, uh, I was an intelligence officer, and I think you're always having to interact with operators, interact with different, you know, intelligence disciplines, bringing things together. And uh, most of my work as an academic now has all been about um, emerging technology in international security. Right, and, and I put kind of both of my affiliations on that title slide. One is the School of Cybersecurity and Privacy in the Georgia Tech College of Computing. And then the other one is the Sam Nunn School of International Affairs in the College of Liberal Arts, right? So, um, you know, I've kind of always I continue to be uh, split across these two worlds. Um, and uh, that's great. Um, and there's a lot there, um, and, you know, there's certainly a lot of demand for interdisciplinary work, certainly, you know, not just policy and tech, but, um, you know, within a lot, a lot of different categories, uh, but maybe there's some challenges, too, that, that I can talk through. Um, I think, you know, let's, let's start with the concept of, of interdisciplinary, you know, there are these different words that people throw out when they're trying to explain, yeah, we know we're trying to work across different silos of expertise, um, where you've got people that have worked on different things and they've got different norms and different standards for what counts as good work, um, different ways of talking and different vocabulary. Um, how do we bring that together, right? We know the world is not like that. Um, and, you know, and here we're all studying international security, international relations. One of the things that drew me to this field and keeps me in it is that you know, it is kind of the highest level of complexity. Whatever you're interested in, right, you can always go one step higher until you get to the planet, right? So, I mean, you know, international relations is technology, strategy, leadership, economics, politics, right? Everything comes together. So I think that, you know, in our field, like we tend to be inherently a little more interdisciplinary uh, than others. And I guess I would just throw this out, right? I mean, like, like, like we have a, a tendency to beat ourselves up in IR and, and we should, and like that makes us better. Just like the US military thinks it's always gonna lose against China or Russia, it's not, but like that helps it always get better. Okay, so paranoia is, is good, but we are always bringing things in. And I think that political scientists, especially IR folks, compared to all the other disciplines that I've looked at, they are most comfortable with interfacing with other disciplines because we have to be, right? We're confronted with so much complexity. We're confronted with our own ignorance constantly that we're having to develop those bridges. So, so I think that we have the kind of fundamental instincts. All right, great. But the question is like, there are different kinds of interdisciplinarity. People talk about multidisciplinary, right? And multidisciplinary means like there are multiple perspectives. People come there and they share their expertise. This is like the physicist sits down and tells you about nuclear weapons and the arms control walk, talks about how to do things. And then the strategist gets together and, and you've learned something that's great, right? It's like coalition warfare where you're like, you get that side of the line. I This is my AOR, you stay out of it. We'll do our things and we'll kind of go together, right? Then there's kind of genuine interdisciplinary work where like, well, we have to work together and we're both gonna learn something, right? Our expertise is in one discipline, but we've got to, we've got to get joint. We've got to have combined arms warfare, right? Um, you know, so like Douglas North wins the Nobel Prize because it combines game theory and it combines history, right? It's and the result is awesome, right? And he's got this like really, really unique and, and deeply interdisciplinary take on um economic history. Um, and then there's this other word you sometimes hear called transdisciplinary, right? When people talk about the birth of new disciplines, right? Where, you know, you've become so interdisciplinary that you're just different than, than the parents, all right? So, you know, like when the army like buds off the Air Force or now we've created Space Force, it's like, this is so interdisciplinary and different from the things that feed into it that we need to, to make it its own thing. And, you know, international relations is kind of that, right? It's 
Yeah, it's got parts of sociology and parts of political science and parts of history. But, you know, in, in some countries, right, in the UK, they're just like, no, IR is, is a different thing. It's become genuinely transdisciplinary at this point. So I think you have to figure out, like, which category you're in, because that's going to really, like, tell you what your strategy should be, okay? If you're looking at kind of a multidisciplinary problem, like, I've got to tell you, like, you need to be really, really good at a discipline, right? Be a good political scientist, right? A really good political scientist, and then go into this room and have a conversation with others. But they'll respect you, you'll respect yourself, right? Uh, you'll be able to bring some kind of tools to bear on that. Um, that's cool. Um, if you're going to do a more interdisciplinary project, then like you're going to have to start to learn a lot more about a secondary discipline. But you still want to have that primary specialty. But now like you're applying your knowledge, but you're also going to be learning things, and maybe it'll help you start to rethink what you're doing. Now, the temptation that people have, and I see this all the time with young grad students that want to look, work on tech topics, is they want to go full transdisciplinary, right? And that means they're like, I want to study quantum computing, right? And to study quantum computing, we have to totally rethink political science. And political science are, are so screwed up because they don't understand how important technology is, and no one talks about technology in any of our theories, and they certainly don't talk about quantum, so we're just going to have to reinvent everything, okay? Maybe, but in the process, you're going to alienate all of your political science friends because they're going to say, I have no idea what you're working on. Um, and it doesn't, I don't understand it. It doesn't seem very good. I, I guess if we're going to have a conversation about quantum, I want you in the room. The quantum physicists, they're going to be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you don't really even know what we do. I don't know what you're doing. So you end up in this nether region, right? I've seen so many examples of young grad students, right, be the smartest technologist in a room full of social scientists. And that feels good because you get invited to a lot of meetings and maybe you get some grants, right? But then nobody hires you and nobody brings you because like you don't really have kind of expertise in your own discipline, nor are you recognized as an expert outside of it. So this is a huge trap that you need to be careful of, right? And I think the way out of that is to really, you know, kind of embrace the fact that you're in an IR prop, uh, program, like we know some stuff in IR, right? We've got hundreds, if not thousands of years of thinking about it. And those concepts are useful, even for radically new things like AI, quantum, or hypersonics, right? You can bring kind of solid knowledge about how institutions work and how power works, about how coercive diplomacy works, and you can apply it to those problems. And when you do that, it'll be recognizable because you'll translate something that's kooky and weird and technical into a language that your colleagues understand. And when you go to technologists, they'll be like, man, you just told me something about my own discipline that I just totally didn't know. I never thought about that, right? And that's that's where the magic starts to happen, right? Like that's when you can start to put together really cool interdisciplinary teams right? It's kind of like Voltron, where like everybody's really good at their thing, and they get together and they form the giant robot, or the Avengers, or whatever, right? Um, but you need to be really good at the thing you do before you, you know, uh, come together. Um, all right, let's see if there's, I'll pause there um, while I'm figuring out what the hell else I was going to say. Yeah, let me just go ahead uh, and ask a question, John, then. Yeah. So you talked about uh, a little bit of the dangers of of that, but how about when you take these skills uh, because you're going to combine them? How do you translate that into a job or into publications and all? Yeah, uh, well, I, I think it's very much the same advice, right? I mean, you know, any job or especially any publication is speaking to an audience, right? And so, if you're going to make it, you know, if you're going to get an IR job and then get tenure in an IR job, you need to gonna, need to publish in IR publications, it needs to be things that they understand, right? So you want to take the concepts of that discipline and apply it to it, or speak really clearly to the meaningful debates in that discipline, right? You don't wanna just be translating one to the other, like that, that's the trap, okay? You wanna be applying and pushing um, the field forward. So for example, right, like, like I, the the once I understood that information technology was fundamentally a social institution, just like the World Bank, just like the U.S. government, right? Um, 
just like the United Nations, right? It's a set of protocols, it's a set of rules, right? <laughs> Programs, code, procedures, functions, uh, registries, right? All the bureaucratic language that's part of institutions is part of IT. And once I realized that, I was like, oh, now I can take all of the things that we know from IPE, International Political Economy, we can apply it to the internet, we can apply it to command and control systems, we can think about market failures within information systems. We can think about governance failures that get captured or have over, you know, lock-in problems, right? And we can start thinking about kind of the economics and the politics of these technical systems, right? So that was that was really, really useful for me, right? Um, you know, and then it led into thinking about, okay, like, well, if information technology is an institution, then what does it mean to subvert and exploit that, right? Well, that means that, like, if you're going to do things like intelligence and covert action, then institutions need to be in place. And this means that intelligence is a different thing than war. War is a clash between institutions. Intelligence is about subversion within common institutions. Okay, wow, we're in actually a different category of politics. So, so I think that you can use different disciplines and the tensions that it creates as this kind of like generative playpen to start to find out kind of the interesting puzzles back in your own discipline so that then you can you can use that well john we've come to the end of the time and as usual i've learned far more from you <laughs> than i had expected to but that's a uh, great advice for those interested in interdisciplinary uh, uh, work and that's all the time we have for advice for grad students see you again